So right before Noah's Great Flood, how did many of those animals travel across the continents to get to his ark to begin with? Well, luckily for us, the Christian fundamentalist has an answer. And this time from a geophysicist, a scientist whose theory doesn't stand up to science at all. Stay tuned and I'll tell you why. So far on this playlist of the Great Flood story, I've shown that the Hebrews have clearly stolen the story from the Sumerians and that Noah and his family couldn't have possibly supported the entire species of animals and plants on that 500-foot ark. And now the question arises on how did animals from different continents even get to the ark to begin with? Well, luckily, Dr. John Baumgartner, a geophysicist and evangelist, as well as a Christian fundamentalist apologist, had an answer. He stated that it was all one landmass before the flood, and then broke up consequently during the flood. So the seven continents that make up the world have only been broken up approximately 5,000 years. Now, in order for you to accept this theory, you have to completely reject everything that the geologists and paleontologists have shown is true regarding the once unified landmass known as Pangaea, which did exist about 200 million years ago. The reason they know it existed till about 200 million years ago is because of the extensive studies and carbon dating that they have done on various rocks over mountain ranges where they can clearly show that ranges from different continents came from the same base origin. But never mind all those extensive results from all those scientists from different genres all over the world. One geophysicist who's an evangelist says they're wrong. Well, there you have it. Now, we know that there's plate tectonics and that the continents are still drifting today, some at varying speeds from others, generally from 2 to 10 centimeters a year. Basically, that's how long it took the drift to form the planet to what it looks like today. Dr. Baumgartner's theory, however, is different, and he built a computer model called Terra to prove it. I will leave the links of his theories in various articles and the counter responses in the video description in case you feel like you have insomnia one night and need to do some really tedious reading. But I will break down in layman's terms basically what Dr. Baumgartner's theory is. It's something called runaway subduction. Basically, it is when the top layer of the Earth's crust pushes down into the ocean floor, causing a heated response making it even more pliable so the crust can slide faster. In his estimation, a couple meters a second versus the two to 10 centimeters a year. And that makes sense to him because now we have a reason why all the animals could have been on one piece of land before entering the ark, even though it doesn't explain how those very same animals could have traveled through conditions that don't support them. But nevertheless, it solves the land part. In that movement of the plate, a few meters a second would have given enough time in 40 days and 40 nights to give semblance of what the Earth looks like today. He also explains that the magma released would cause such vapor in the air that it would allow for those continuous rains for 40 days and 40 nights. And then furthermore, once those waters retreated from the continents at about 100 miles an hour, that was adequate to form landmarks such as the Grand Canyon and Zion National Park stating that there's clearly sediment layers that were formed by water deposits. And then he states how more and more secular scientists are coming to this view because it does make perfect sense in accordance with, of course, the Bible. Well, here's what the scientists are actually saying, and their responses are 100% slam dunks on why this couldn't happen. First, let's talk about these waterborne sediment layers in Zion Park and Grand Canyon. Yes, water levels have risen over the ages, but in between these sediment water layers is a troublesome fact for the creationist, because there's also windborne sediment layers, which Dr. Baumgartner clearly ignores. So we know for unequivocal fact that the retreat of massive water was not the factor in sculpting these natural wonders. And then there's the problem of the water rushing off the continents at 100 miles an hour. If that had happened, we would have had a great deal of more sediment deposit in the oceans than we do. There would be much more sediment deposit at the ocean than on the land. And this has been repeatedly found not to be the case at all. Therefore, once again, negating Dr. Baumgartner's theory completely. 
And here's the final nail in the coffin, backed by his own laws of physics, against his own theory. If this runaway subduction was occurring like he stated, the thermal diffusivity would have to increase by 10 times, and the heat that would be produced was noted to have to be 10 to the 28th power joules, which would boil all the oceans. This assertion is much like the assertion they had when they ran into trouble, because they realized that the Ark couldn't maintain or even fit several million species on it, so it just came up with that Genesis only meant one kind of animal family, and that they all re-evolved back into all the species we have today after the flood. And then that troublesome science clearly states that those massive genetic alterations between the dog and a fox would take millions of years to accomplish, not 5,000. And here they've done it again. They can't explain how animals got from one continent to another, so they disregard all prior science and state that the supercontinent of Pangaea was there right before the flood 5,000 years ago, then come up with this wild theory on plate tectonics, and then plug in the data on a computer simulated program created by Dr. Baumgartner. That proves it's somehow possible, and then are clearly shown by those very laws of physics that they claim to adhere to that their theory was impossible to begin with a theory in which a planet behaved in a way that it never has in its entire 4.6 billion year history. But do you know where the widely growing support for this theory actually is? It's the Institute of Creation Research. It's every internet vlog and blog based in creationism. In the article for my link in US News, the consensus when this information was presented to other scientists was that Dr. Baumgartner was just flat out wrong on every level. Nobody agreed with him. So now I'm sure I'm going to be accused of not respecting his degree or knowledge base in science. No, I don't. Because if somebody is a religious fanatic, they're going to see what they want to see, take only a limited amount of facts that they can use to mold their worldview, and ignore the rest of the concrete evidence in front of them. Just like Josh McDowell was supposedly well studied in the Hebrew language, but ignores the real meaning for the word virgin as in Virgin Mary, taken from the prophecies in Isaiah. He completely ignores the fact that the literal translation means young woman, because it doesn't fit his worldview, no matter how many accolades he has next to his name. And this is always my point when debunking the fundamentalist Christian. Dr. Baumgartner is a geophysicist, but is also an evangelist apologist. He didn't like the facts in front of him, so came up with a maybe argument. Maybe God did this, maybe this happened. So put a theoretical model together to prove it, not realizing that the consequential effects of his own proof actually disprove it. And all the Christian fundamentalists who hear this from their pastor are gonna listen to this concept of runaway subduction, and they're gonna have no idea what they're even listening to. So no, we're closing the coffin on the idea that we were one supercontinent 5,000 years ago that got broken up from the great flood that covered the earth. Case closed. If you'd like to read a novel of what I think the apocalypse would be like if Christ ever returned, a tale that the fundamentalists will despise, hit the link on the video description or the banner, and I'll see you next time when we use reason and reality to thrust that sword into the heart of ignorance.